Now, earlier this year, uh, a man named Dan Price, CEO of credit card company uh, payment processor Gravity Payments, had announced and shocked the world when he announced that he will eventually raise the minimum wage for his employees, all of them, to at least $70,000 a year. Jesus fucking Christ. That's a lot of money. At least to me. Uh, now, of course, this went viral and conservative pundits jumped all over it, forecasting doom and gloom. Now, you had, uh, for example, Rush Limbaugh calling Price, get this, a socialist. He's a socialist. And I hope his business fails. Wow. That's pretty classy, for one, right? Hoping that a business would fail because, God forbid, he actually chose to do something nice for his employees to show that he actually values them by reducing his own salary to pay for raising up everyone else's. Wow, what a socialist, right? What a her what, what a horrible person, right? What a horrible businessman, according to uh, <laughs> Rush Limbaugh, right? Now, Rush Limbaugh, he is an odious douchebag that apparently hates the American worker. Now, I also thought that he loved job creators. Well, apparently not in this case. He apparently wants people to, um, you know, make 300 times more their workers. And he wants workers, low-wage workers, to know their place. Okay, all right. Now, there were other articles that were written uh, that show a backlash. Dan's brother, for example, uh, Lucas Price, is suing Dan. Uh, and some of his cu customers, of course, had jumped ship at his seeming political statement. It was a bit of a mess. It was a bit of a mess. However, fast forward six months later, and they're actually starting to see some financial results. All right, so what happened? Was Rush Limbaugh correct? Did this uh, company burst a flame, fall into the ground? What, what happened to it? Well, of course not. When was Rush Limbaugh ever right about anything? No, he was absolutely wrong. In a recent interview, Dan Price told Inc. Magazine that his company, Gravity Payments, is actually doing better than ever. According to Price, revenue is now growing at double the rate before the raises began, and so have profits. Now, I mentioned earlier it lost a few customers along the way, right? But overall, the company's customer retention rate rose from 91% to 95%, and only two employees left. Two quit. Now, they could be easily replaced from the 4,500 resumes and new customer inquiries. Yes, new, so, so 4,500 resumes to replace those two employees, and as, of course, for customer inquiries, it jumped from 30 a month to 2,000 a month. That's amazing. Now, some of this is no doubt from some of the media attention from it going viral. Not every company that does something like this or raises their pay is going to end up with the same result. Media attention did have a lot to do with this. Let's be fair and honest, right? But still, this is an amazing result. Now, let's go back and kind of refresh everybody from the story, right? So what happened is, is that an entry-level employee named Jason Haley had actually been having a bad day. So Price, of course, went to talk to him. And uh, this is how the situation went down. It was late 2011. Haley was a 32-year-old phone tech earning about 35 grand a year. And he was in a sour mood. Remember, this is Seattle, so a little bit higher standard of living. Where I live, $35,000 a year can set you off pretty sweet. Now, Price had noticed this sour mood, and when he spotted Haley outside on a smoke break, he approached him and asked, Hey, it seems like something's bothering you. Oh, what's on your mind, man? What's on your mind? Now, already, sounds like a pretty decent boss. Most bosses would be like, Hey, get, back, get your ass back to work. Lazy ass. At least most of the bosses that I've ever known. But anyway, so in response to that question, Haley told him flat out, you're ripping me off. Oh. Now, once again, I go back to my own experience in the places that I've worked. 
And if you were to say something like that to your boss, you'd be shit-canned. Right out the door. But that didn't happen. Instead, Price was reportedly taken aback, since Haley was reported to be shy and not prone to outbursts. So he replied, your pay is based on market rates. If you have different data, please let me know. I have no intention of ripping you off. Haley had responded, the data doesn't matter. I know your intentions are bad. You brag about how financially disciplined you are, but that just translates into me not making enough money to lead a decent life. Uh, once again, in most places, shit can. Gone. He'd be fired so fast his head would spin. Now, I'm not saying that that's what should have happened. But to me, in my opinion, this guy had some pretty giant fucking balls to talk to his boss like that. Like, I don't know what kind of workplace that is, but it sounds like a very open, honest workplace. Some place that I wouldn't have mind, minded working at. Now, Price, for his part, was pretty upset. Now, he told his family and friends that he felt horrible and like a victim. He thought he was felt victimized, right? So he thought about it for a while, about the interaction, talked to his friends and family, etc., etc., right? And uh, he thought that he was protecting his business, which I don't have anything wrong with that, right? I don't see anything wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. They went through a recession. They barely survived the recession. So he was protecting his company. But he was doing so by paying his workers a lot less than what they felt they should be paid. And after talking to a friend that was struggling to get by in about 50 grand, he realized that if he wanted to grow his business, that he should invest more into his employees. So that's exactly what he did. So first he decided to give out 20%, uh, a 20% annual raise to all of his staff. Now while the raises came with the cost, according to Inc. Magazine, Profit still rose as much as a year before, thanks to an increase in productivity. It turns out when you pay people more, they'll want to work harder. Imagine that. Uh, he decided to hand out the same raise next year to the same result. Before April's announcement, the company reached $150 million in revenue and $2.2 million in profit and had a 15% annual growth rate. And he's not done with the raises, by the way. He's actually still phasing them year in year after year. But already, this company has seen massive amounts of growth. And it's just what some economists have been saying. And for example, I go to two economists who actually surveyed uh, years of research and found that when major American companies raised their pay, it increased productivity and performance. It also enhanced customer service, reduced home turnover, and attracted better job candidates. All of which taken together, can actually lower costs and increase sales. It's a good thing for the company. Also, one of the studies they examined found that more than half the cost of higher wages can be offset through these improvements, while other researchers found that a higher minimum wage can benefit companies through improved efficiency, reduced turnover, and improved recruitment, as I had mentioned before. A lot of benefits to doing so, but it does come at a cost to his own personal wealth. Remember, he reduced his own salary to $70,000 a year, the same as the rest of his employees. He was making about $1.1 million a year, and he didn't think that was fair upon reflection. Now, he does hope that his company will continue to be more profitable so he can bump that up for himself as well, and it makes sense, right? <clears throat> And what it comes down to is this. I don't think that you need to make 300 times more than your employees. Should you make more for taking more of the risk? Yes, but 300 times? I don't know. Do you work 300 times harder? Do you have 300 times more risk? Not exactly. Now, you also don't have to give everything to your employees either and go broke. That's also not what we advocate for. You have to find that middle ground which increases all of those good things and also make sure that you do make money off your business and make it worthwhile to do. And when you do all that, you get rewarded. You see, when liberals like me call to raise the minimum wage, 
it's not because we want to punish businesses, right? We don't want to punish business or punish success or destroy private corporations. We don't want to do that. We want to raise the minimum wage because there's empirical data out there that actually shows that companies that raise wages and treat their employees better, they do better. They do better in all sorts of different metrics. The workers are happier, the customers are happier, the economy around them gets better because their employees have more to spend at other places, which ends up creating jobs and raising everybody's standards of living. And really, that's kind of the goal here. Make life better for everyone, even the business owner. We're not against business owners. We're not against capitalists. We just want a system that's a bit more fair that raises everyone up. As opposed to what we have now, where we have, what, 40 families that own most of the wealth? That's insane. We don't want that. All right. And as I mentioned, that's what capitalism should be. Instead of everyone at the top hoarding so much money that they'll never need. More money doesn't make you happier, and it certainly doesn't make you a better person. Being a better person is actually realizing that people around you are suffering and then actually trying to help do something about it. That's what makes you a better person.